today I wanted to speak to you about some things that the Lord has done in my life and in ways that he has showed me his glory. Um, but I don't want to leave you thinking of me. I want to think you, leave you thinking about God and how he has worked in me. Um, I wanted to start out with this verse that's in Romans 6, 4. And this has not only happened to me, it's happened to all of us here. It says, Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Uh, God's glory is always dominant over everything and anything that would ever try to exert itself against it. When uh, God drew near to the grave of his son, so to speak, uh, his glory was dominant over death, and so death uh, had to leave. Christ was raised. And I can testify here today that God has also done this in me. There was a time when I was alive to the world, but I was dead to God. And, uh, but the Lord, he revealed himself to me, and he drew, he gave me eyes to believe, he gave me eyes to see, and I died to this present evil world. But God wasn't done with me. He didn't leave me just to die. He, he, he drew near to me, and that same glory that raised Jesus also um, raised me up, that I can now walk in newness of life. Death no longer has dominion over me, and neither do I want to partake of the things of which I have died to. I have the privilege now of being a partaker of the kingdom of God. This reality that I am now a new creature just really burst upon my heart a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I still haven't gotten over it, so I wanted to pray, I wanted to uh, tell you a little bit about it. I did share some of this with the brethren at the Word of Truth. But um, this true that I have been born again, not to this order, not to this flesh, but that I have been born again to be in the presence of God and his glory forever, that I won't have to die, I will always be there. It's, it's just really been edifying to, to see that. And uh, also that I will never be identified with this world anymore. Um, I love this verse now. It's really become dear to me. It says in Revelation 3.12, it says, I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. So there, everybody's going to know that I belong to God. I'm not going to have flesh written on me. I'm not going to have sin and death written on me anymore. It's going to have the name of my God and the name of his city. I'm not going to be... Um, known by this present evil world. I'm going to be known that I belong there. Amen. Um, these things are yet to come, and I am seeking them. But by the grace of God, I can now here walk in the newness of life as well. I have seen the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. I saw that it was because of the sin that resided in me as well as all the other people in this world that he the Son of God, had to become his lamb. And that he lived his life showing compassion on others and teaching about God's kingdom and um, only to become sin and go through great suffering and, and shame. And, and uh, he did this to take my place of God's wrath that was, direct, it was directed toward me. Um, but he did it so that I wouldn't be condemned and so that he could now receive back a bride to himself. When I saw my sin like God saw it, I, it worked in me a godly sorrow and it caused me to repent. And I am thankful that the Lord granted me this repentance. Um, it was the glory of God that showed it to me though. He is the one that commanded that the light would shine out of darkness. And at that time, I was not thinking about anything else other than that. I wanted to be, um, I wanted to be right with God. Um, I was 14 
when I became very aware of, of this condition that I was in. And I didn't care about anyone else or anything else other than I wanted my sins to be washed away. And I wanted, um, not just so I didn't have to go to hell, but so I could go to be with Christ. Amen. Um, so I was baptized. And a lot happened to me in that first year. Um, I had a lot of sorrow that um, 14, 15 year olds don't normally go through. But when I look back on it, I can see that God was purging me from these um, awful circumstances that I have gotten myself into before I was in Christ. And so I th now when I look back at it, I can see that God was the one that was um, holding me up because he was keeping me for himself. Amen. He was, even though I didn't know it at the time, he was working. Um, I, I'm aware of it now. I was just a babe then, and I wasn't aware of it, but I am now. And I can see that this, how this will bring him glory. Um, a couple of years went by, and um, I had something else come up in my life that became a definite fork in the road. I was either going to uh, go back to the destruction that he had just led me out of, or I was going to trust in him. And I'm thankful that the Lord gave me eyes to see this. And uh, God, like I said, he had started a work in me, and he wasn't willing that I should perish. So in this time of need, he gave me the grace that I needed to make a sound decision. And I put my hands to the plow, and I still haven't looked back. It was not long after that that I met uh, my husband, Brother Jeremy. And I wanted to take time to thank the Lord for him, too. Um, I'm thankful for his mercy that he has given me uh, him as a helpmate and that we could labor together in God's kingdom. And uh, one time I, I had given him a verse. It was found in Song of Songs. It was uh, chapter 5 or 16. It says, His mouth is most sweet. Yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved and this is my friend. And I gave that to him because since we were married, he has always used his mouth to speak words of edification to me and to minister to me. And he has helped me to grow and to continue to run this race to glory. So um, the fact that we can track together and bear each other's burdens and sharpen each other as iron sharpens iron, all while still in these vile bodies, brings God much glory to um, not long after we were married, we were hungry souls, and we were searching to be fed, but we weren't finding any nourishment, and that's when the Lord um, sent Brother Ricky and Sister Tasha down to minister the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, and we did grow so much under their ministry, and I'm hungry for more. <laughs> And I'm also thankful that God drew us here to Joplin to labor with the brethren here. And I've noticed an increase even since we have moved here, which was just January of this year. And I've seen my appetite for fellowship with the Lord, fellowshipping with him has increased even more. And that he has enlarged my heart to see more of his glory. Now, when you guys look at me, you can see I'm not a finished work yet. But I am being changed from glory to glory. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, But we all with open face, beholding as in a class, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So we can see the glory of God most precisely in the face of Jesus Christ. I can, I can look at Jesus through the scriptures and through the eyes of faith, and it will change me. One example, I mean, there's lots, but one example that I see when I look at Christ is that he was not average or mediocre in anything that he ever put his hand to. In all things, he was most excellent. He was God's beloved son, and God was well pleased with him. And this is my desire as well. And everything that I do, I want to do it unto the Lord. Um, not as to earn my salvation, but I want to be pleasing to God. 
I want to walk in the light, even as he is in the light. Then as I have fellowship with him, the, bl the blood of Jesus will cleanse me from all sin. Amen. And I know that if I remain in the light, I will only advance. Amen. Um, sometimes advancing does come through means of a trial. And I know I haven't gone through um, trials, some of them as hard as some of you brethren have here, but for me they were my trials, and they were a time of testing of my faith. And I wanted to share um, some things that the Lord showed Brother Jeremy and I through the birth of our son, um, Jeremy Levi. Uh, we had a little bit of difficulty in even achieving this, but the Lord had mercy upon me, and he gave me um, to carry him full term. And when he was born, just at the sound of his first cry, I knew something was wrong. And uh, he had one of his lungs were immature. And so they had to put him on um, a breathing machine and, and on oxygen. And, and so we weren't able to hold him. And that was really hard for me. <laughs> but the night before at our Bible study, um, Brother Ricky was discussing Jesus raising up Lazarus. And he was bringing out the truth that sometimes God does let your circumstances get worse so that he can work and that this will bring him more glory. Um, that, that evening, it was the middle of the night, I went in there and I, I, just to look at him. I hadn't even got to see him. And so I was in there looking at him and I was just praying for him. And he was doing pretty well at that point. He was, they were weaning him off of the ventilator. And so I just sat there a couple hours and then I got tired so I went back to bed. But a couple hours later, the doctors came in to wake me up, and they said that he had developed a hole in his lung. And uh, the second day, he just progressively got worse. And by the third morning, he had developed emphysema, too. And so they were going to transport him to a children's hospital. And um, all the way up to that point, I was just thankful that we were at the same place, that I was at least in the same hospital he was in. But um, now they were going to be taking him away. But I just kept remembering. I just kept thinking about, um, I knew that the Lord was in control of it. And, I, and the Lord gave me grace to, to go through it. And uh, the fourth morning came, and, and it was the Lord's Day. And Jeremy and I were having um, service in my hospital room. And the hospital called, the children's hospital called. And they said that that night, right after they took him, that uh, he was doing... He just totally recovered. He, um, he, they took him off the ventilator. His lung was better. And uh, I, they wanted me to come in as soon as I was discharged to come in to feed him. And so Jeremy and I immediately gave thanks to the Lord uh, for his mercy and compassion that he had on us and, and for healing him. But like I said, through the whole thing, I just had a peace because I remembered how Christ, um, how he did raise Lazarus and how this did bring him much glory. And this test did increase our faith and our love for God because we saw more of him. We saw a greater measure of his glory and was able to come out through the trial without the smell of smoke on our clothes. Um, the reason I told you of these things is because every time God does show us something, it is revealing more of himself, more of his glory. Because one day we will be in the presence of God, Amen. in the fullness of his glory. Well, I want to become acquainted with it now as much as possible Amen. so that when I do enter into it, it will be a, not a fearful thing, but a a glorious occasion and salvation is doing this in us um, as I continue to grow in the Lord he is faithful to show me even more and I have seen enough that I know that when God and his Christ come ripping through those clouds and the fullness of their glory unveiled that I don't want to be standing there ashamed but on the contrary I want to be to the praise of his glory I even now, when people see me or hear me speak, I want them to think of God. And on that day, I want to be a finished work that is evident to everyone who sees me that it is only the hand of God who has done this in me. 
I want him to have honor where, because it is due to him. And this is why we are even here. This is why God has made us. We weren't created to settle down in our own corners of the world and, you know, to kiss my husband goodbye and make sure my kids are well fed and safe. I do do all these things, but that's not why my, that's not the explanation of my existence. Isaiah 43, 7 says, For I have created him for my glory. I want to be pleasing in the eyes of my God, and I know I can be because I won't be standing there in my own righteousness. But I will be clothed in the righteousness of Christ, and it, it's a, that is <laughs> much comfort to me to know that. And I also love to think of this verse when I, when I think about standing in the presence of God. That's in 1 John 3, 2. It says, Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it does not appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen. And this also, this verse also brings much comfort to me because when judgment day is come, I won't be veiled with this flesh. It'll be gone, and I will be like Christ. And it will not be a fearful time for me, but I will be in the comfort, and I will be in comfort in the presence of the Almighty God, and I'll finally be at home. And this, I know, will bless God and bring him glory.